This week I went live in my Facebook community like I do every Thursday and we talked all about using fake babies, dolls to help you practice for your newborn photography. The thing is, when you are using a fake baby, when you're using a doll, there are certain things that you can and can't learn. I share all of that and more in this video. So make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell thing because it's gonna give you notifications every time I upload a new video. I hope you enjoy. Posing dolls. Uh, we hear that term all the time and I am constantly asked, where do I get my doll? And this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this live because you, if you are uh, familiar with my website, newbornposing.com, you will see that throughout the majority of my tutorials on there, when I'm working with a real baby and I'm teaching, I also work with my fake baby, which allows me obviously more time to be able to explain why I do things a certain way or discuss lots of safety and you know, tips and, and things that um, people might not be aware of. But what's really important to understand is that this is an amazing doll, right? Now, I don't tell everyone where I got her from because I had her made especially for me. And the price point was, let's just say, um, not something that, you know, someone just starting out in newborn photography should be spending on, you know, on something like this because it was a lot of money. I think it was just over 2,000 euro to get her here. And the reason that I purchased her was for training not for me to practice and learn from, but for me to use as a training tool to help with teaching. So I only got her after I had started teaching. And if you remember, if you have seen, sorry, my first Creative Live, um, which may be eight years ago, I actually had this one with me. So she was my very first practice doll, and I still have her. I do have another one floating around here somewhere, but I couldn't find her. And, um, and that was the doll that I learnt with. So she cost me, I think it was around 200 Australian dollars. I did invest at the time, that was a lot of money for me. Um, you know, I think I've had her now for about 12 years. And she's in amazing condition because obviously she stays in my studio. But, um, and, and she's not a toy. But yeah, she has been amazing for me to learn, learn with. And, um, and I have obviously used her as well. But, but this one here is, is the one that I do my teaching with. So it's not really something that you need to invest in to learn from. When I do um, recommend dolls, um, it's basically just a doll. All you need is something that is going to be of a similar size to the average newborn baby, roughly around uh, three and a half kilos, maybe about seven and a half pounds is I think around the average there. But when you are practicing with a doll, with a fake baby, um, there, are, there are certain things that you can and can't learn. And I'm gonna run through those with you now. But wrapping, camera skills and lighting are gonna be the main three things that you should be focused on when using a fake baby. Uh, when it comes to your camera skills, you can practice you know, your camera angles, your composition, your focus. Um, you can even practice your lighting uh, if you can get that baby positioned in a certain way. But no fake baby, it doesn't matter what it is out there on the market is going to be um, a complete replica of a newborn baby. It's never going to give you the same results as working with a real baby. They are never going to bend or move or be positioned the same as a baby. And that's because they don't have ligaments, they don't have muscles, and they don't have joints like babies. You can pretty much use any, anything, and even Deborah Freeman here says that she used a stuffed bear. Yes, oh Deborah, funny story, I had to go to Korea to teach, and they had you know, been messaging with me, emailing with me, and said that I was expected to do a presentation and a demonstration, uh, not with a real baby, and when I turned up, they gave me a, stuff, a stuffed dog, and the arms and legs were so long, <laughs> I had to fold them in half just to be able to wrap the baby and position it, but it was absolutely hilarious because not many of them spoke a word of English, and um, yeah, it was quite funny. But I, I definitely wasn't expecting a stuffed dog. The other doll that I've got here is um, one from Kmart, $15, 15 Australian dollars. So 
when I say, you know, there are things that you can and can't learn from a doll, even my, my silicon doll, I, I can train with it and show different poses and where to place your hands and things like that. But when you are learning to pose a baby, you need to be very mindful of positioning a baby's um, limbs and their head and their neck in props and on posing bags and watching the way that they react to being moved, the way that they are positioned. Because their reaction is what's going to give you um, you know, the awareness of maybe they don't like that position, maybe that's hurting them, maybe they don't like their hands and feet being touched, maybe they don't want to be placed in the bum up position because they naturally um, have a rounded back, not an arched back. And that's the thing, every single baby is different and we have to remember that. We've got to be really, really conscious of the fact that you, you cannot force a baby into any pose and you must always be baby led because it's the only way that you are going to keep a baby comfortable and, and I suppose, you know, nice and rested and sleepy throughout a session so that you can get through your session as quickly as you can um, at the rate that the baby allows you for comfort and safety. All right, so. Like I said, lots of different price points here and there is always an option for everyone when starting out for those different price points. It is obviously up to you on how much money you want to invest in a, a doll to practice with. But what I'm saying is that if you're just starting out in newborn photography or you've been a photographer for a long time and you may be just getting into newborn photography, you might not want to invest a lot of money in something like this because um, it might not be for you. So I invested a lot of money in this because I knew that I was going to use her a lot within my business when training and it's been an incredible tool for me and I know that many of you, um, obviously, we get a lot of emails daily saying, where did you get that doll? Um, because everybody wants one but it, is, it isn't something that I would recommend you go out and spend a lot of money on if you are just starting out because it is a big investment and you need to you know, make sure that you are going to, to get your money, money's worth, I suppose, in terms of use. Um, what else was I gonna say then before I start wrapping? I can't remember, I'll get, it'll come back to me. But have we got any questions yet? Uh, none just yet, but we've got um, quite a few more people joining us. Um, Hi everyone. Deborah says, hi, Garrett. Oh, hi, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it there? It is currently 12 minutes past two. All right. So what I thought I'd do is just use my comfort style of wrap. If you've got my wrapping tutorials, you'll see, I think there's nine different wrapping techniques in that, tutor in that tutorial. And the comfort wrap is probably one of my go-to wraps. It's actually the way I wrap a baby when I first go into a full body wrap or the potato sack or something like that as well. I find it a really easy way to keep the baby comfort comfortable. And that's why I called it the comfort wrap because I can wrap their arms in and it makes them feel nice and secure. It stops that startle reflex. And then I can position the wrap around their body to help, help keep their legs nice and curled up and so on. But we'll start with our really cheap doll. I think that's gonna be great. And what I'm gonna do is um, wrap these babies the exact same way. And then I'm gonna pop them down here in, uh, in the prop and show you. All right, so when I am starting out with my, um, my comfort wrap, I just bring the little hands up underneath the chin. And this is the thing, it's not a real baby, so we're not practicing our posing, but as long as we can get the baby positioned very similar to the way that you would position a real baby. So I'm just gonna pull that wrap up and over the hands. So you can see I'm keeping those hands in position with mine. As I pull that wrap across, I grab it with my thumb. And then this way, I can bring that wrap even further over and tuck it in underneath. So now I'm still keeping the wrap secure. And I know, you know, wrapping can be a little tricky when you first start all the different styles and things like that. But if you've got a baby that's awake, if you've got a baby that's got a very strong startle reflex, this would be my go-to. So the first thing I notice when I wrap a baby's arms in, just how much more they settle. Because you've got to remember when they're inside the womb, you know, there's not a lot of room for them. And when they're in that fetal position, it's very natural for them to have their hands up by their face. So I want to try and, in those first couple of weeks when I'm photographing a baby, keep a baby 
you know, in that position that they're, that's very natural and they're comfortable in. That's what makes sense to me anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, Maria just asked here, is that Kmart doll? Did you just recently purchase that? Yes, I have had this one before. I just got her purely for this exercise, but I did have one here in the studio and I ended up giving it to a little girl because she just fell in love with it. She was um, a client's little one. She was here with a newborn and um, she, I gave it to her with a prop and some little bonnets and things and she was copying everything I was doing so at the end of the session I said she could have it. But anyway, I did go to Kmart and get this. All right, so I've gone around a second time and I'm going to come up around the top shoulder. Um, with your wrapping technique, you obviously use your legs. Now, some of us yes. uh, over here are more <laughs> um, vertically challenged, let's say, and don't have the longest legs in the world. As far as wrapping goes, will you ever consider um, showing how to wrap on a beanbag or something? Absolutely. Yeah. I, this is probably not the best one because it's got the bar in place yeah. and I'd have to lean over the top of it. But do you know what I used to use? A change table. Um, after I had back surgery, I couldn't sit like this, but I did want to get back into the studio, but I knew my limitations. So I had um, my change table in my studio and I would just stand at the change table and use it like I use my legs. So I would literally just stand there and I would still have the baby positioned on the change table and lean forward up against the edge of it so that I could still help, you know, position the baby with, you know, my stomach or, or so forth. But yeah, it works perfectly. So if you've got a change table, use it. Um, a posing bag, because of the height of it, you will end up with a sore back leaning over to wrap a baby. But if you've got a great stool and you're comfortable doing it that way, you know, absolutely. Or another really great trick is I'm sitting on a stool at the moment, but if you sit flat on the ground and you put a little towel underneath your knees, put your legs straight out in front of you baby's still going to be comfortable but obviously not everyone is um, flexible enough to do that so you've got to know your own limitations and um, you know do what works best for you yes and my legs are a lot longer than Garrett's <laughs> all right so I'm going to come down around that shoulder this is where I would bring those little legs up and cross them and again doesn't matter that it's not the same as a baby we're not practicing our posing we're practicing our wrapping so where the legs don't bend the exact same as a baby. All right. So coming up and around the neck there. And you can even practice, um, you know, with your props. If you've got a client coming in and you've already had that pre-consult with them, you know what they want, you can get everything set up before they arrive in terms of knowing how many supports to put inside a bowl or a, a bucket or whatever it is that they want so that you um, are ready to go once they arrive. All right, so when I'm wrapping a baby like this, obviously those little legs are gonna stick out, but then I can place her down inside my prop. I'll put that little leg down there so it doesn't stick out. Oh well. Okay, now most dolls' heads don't move. Even my silicon doll, her head doesn't move. You can get dolls with heads that move, but do you know what? You don't need a doll's head to move to practice your lighting, to practice your exposure, to practice your focus, to practice styling, composition, all of those things. Um, like I said, this is not about posing because that doll does not have any ligaments, muscles, it cannot react and let you know that it's uncomfortable. And the only way that you can learn how to pose properly is hands-on. But my advice when you are starting to learn your posing hands-on is to make sure that you start simple, you know, don't go diving into composite images and setups and, and very advanced posing. You want to keep it simple and then just progress slowly once, you know, you have that confidence within yourself and you know how um, babies are reacting and responding to your touch. If you haven't, please go and check out my safety videos on newbornposing.com. They're free. I do use a fake baby, but I go through all of the different safety aspects that you should be aware of when working with babies. And that, that's things that I've learnt um, 
over the years, what, 17 years now as a photographer, and I am a mum. Um, I became an aunt when I'm, I was 14. I've learnt a lot about babies um, throughout my life and I've always been very drawn to them and very intrigued. The other thing you can do is go to um, my blog. There's a couple of blog posts on there. There's understanding newborn behaviour. There's how to become a baby whisperer and they'll give you lots of advice and information on um, you know, how you can obviously learn to work with babies if you are quite new. All right, let's have a look at my little mate here, Crystal. And I did not give her that name. She came with a birth certificate. All right, so exact same thing. Now, obviously, she's got a little bit more movement in her because I did pay more for her. So obviously, you're going to get what you pay for. However, you, when you're first starting out, you really you know, want to make sure that your camera skills are on point before you even work with a baby. And the reason being is that when you have a real baby in your hands, you are holding, you are a stranger holding someone's baby for the very first time. So parents are going to be anxious, nervous, excited. They're going to have all the fields, especially tired, you know, deeply in love, all of those things. They're going to be watching that baby, not especially you, but that baby like a hawk. So you want to, you know, have your full attention focused on that baby. Your camera skills, you know, should be second nature to you. You should know them. Um, you should understand every time you pick up your camera what your settings should be. Um, that way, everything is focused on that baby and, and what you need to achieve. All right, so same thing again, hands up. Tuck that in underneath there. Bring it across again. Kelly, and for the viewers at home, could you just turn your legs that way? This way? Just a tad. Yep, and I'll readjust the camera. Okay, we, come on we in. We get a great view there. All righty. There we go. Okay, so what I do love about practicing wrapping techniques on a baby is knowing where to place your hands. Because when you do first start wrapping, it's it's very hard to get the wrap in all the right places, nice and tight, nice and firm. So trying to you know, remember where to position your hands um, is going to help you get that wrap exactly how you want it. All right, so coming around the back and up again on that shoulder. And this is where we can tuck those little legs up. And you can see my hand sitting there on the legs. Now I use my thumb as I bring that wrap around. The, I now can hold the wrap nice and taut with my thumb as I bring the rest of the wrap around. And then I can, I've just lost my mic pack. I can bring the wrap around the other way with, with the other hand and up. And then using my body to keep the legs in position as I lift the head and come around the back. But when you do practice with a baby, treat it like a real baby, you know, be gentle. Um, you don't need to use force. And you should never have stiff hands when you're working with a baby. Always remember your hands should become an extension of the baby and they should just rest gently on the baby. Uh, random question here from Layla. Do you sell those shirts? These ones? <laughs> oh, I think this is a Strawberry Revolution shirt. Um, I've got some amazing shirts. This one, like I said, is from Strawberry Re Re Revolution. Get it out, Kelly. Um, but my, some of my favourite ones, and they branded with my business, are from Faux Tees. All right. So, again, great way to practice your wrapping techniques. And then you can place her in the prop. Good tip, always make sure the upper half of the baby is higher than the lower half, and then nothing is going to block the light coming through. So this is where you can practice where to position your light. Um, you know, knowing the direction of light, watching the shadows, looking at the intensity of your light, making sure that you've got that focus 
um, you know, nice and sharp on the eyes, looking at the different apertures that you, um, you know, can shoot with for different depths of field, all of those things. When it comes to composition, you can practice your rule of thirds, you can practice using leading lines throughout your frame in terms of how you style it and how you position a baby within a prop and, um, and so forth. Different camera angles, goodness, nothing. Um, you know, is going to speed up your workflow more than having a great session workflow and knowing what camera angles to look for with the different poses and the different setups so that you can get through that session, you know, very fluid and, um, and nice and quickly and know what to shoot for. If you haven't seen my um, session workflow video, make sure you check out my YouTube channel. Um, there's lots of videos there with that. All right, so we've talked a lot about this one and obviously when you are working with a silicon doll and I think it was February 2015 <laughs> we decided to make our own baby and we even you know we we made a mold and we created our own doll and my plan was to create an affordable version of this for people because I you know I knew how amazing she was but um, Unfortunately, it ended up costing a lot of money and I realised that, you know what, you don't need an expensive doll. You don't need um, a silicon doll to be able to achieve what it is that you can do with, um, with a doll, a fake baby. All right, so obviously she moves a little differently. I can place her hands a bit better. She is actually a little smaller than these guys and, and smaller than a newborn, but does weigh the same. <laughs> All right, how's everyone going? Is this good? Am I helping? Is there any information? I think people are absorbing a lot because they're very quiet today. Yeah, There's no one's got any watching. questions. Come on. 90 people live with us. Fantastic. Hi, everyone, again. <laughs> So yeah, like I said, if you've got some, if you've got a topic that you want me to cover in the coming weeks, let me know because I'm going to be in here every Thursday live. Um, and make sure you keep an eye out for our Tuesday email because that's going to give you the topic that we're going to cover on the Thursday. And those emails that we send out, we've changed it up a little bit. They're going to come out twice a week, so you're not bombarded and they're going to have useful information in them. So please make sure that you, um, you know, check your junk folder if you don't get that email if you've subscribed. So we've got confirmation here, Kelly. Uh, the information you're providing is quite good. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh, Bianca absorbing lots here. Um, thanks a lot. Loving it from Norma, just absorbing from Shana. Ah, great. You know, you know and doing. it's always nice to watch someone else do something and see how they do it. Um, and when it comes to photography for me, I try not to overcomplicate it. You know, I do what works best for me and I focus on the baby. But when I was learning photography, you know, I'm photographing a still object. For you to, you know, go and buy some beautiful flowers, set them up, light them beautifully, practice your composition, practice your camera angles, look at what works best, get creative, think outside the square, you know, learn how to get beautiful, sharp photos and, and look at, you know, the results from different depths of field because that's just going to make you a much better photographer. And when you walk into a session with a real baby, like I said before, your attention is going to be 100% on that child because those clients, you know, they're trusting you with their brand new baby. So when they leave, you know, they're going to remember how you made them feel throughout the session. And they're also going to remember the way that you handled their baby. I have, you know, so many amazing friends, now friends that were clients because I created a connection with them and I treated their baby the same way I would expect anyone to treat mine. And I, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to be a part of and what we do for families 
and when we're capturing those first you know few weeks of life of their baby that's what they want to remember so try not to get too caught up uh, especially if you're first starting out in all the you know the props and things like that that's not necessary just photograph their baby do it timelessly and they will treasure those photos forever and also that experience that you've provided for them. So before we wrap up today, I have a few questions coming through here oh, great. that I'm going to throw you away. Um, missed the first 10 minutes. Did you share where you get your rat? Okay, so I've got lots of different wraps. I do have um, many. I've got a few at the moment. Um, I oh God, I can't remember where this one is. I'm so sorry, that one there from. But Freebird is pretty much one of my go-to places for wraps. Um, she has beautiful quality and amazing backdrops as well. So yeah, when you are looking for a wrap, you want something that's gonna be nice and long and stretchy, but even go to my blog, newbornposing.com, there's a blog post all about wraps. <laughs> and it's actually got some links and things like that in there and some suggestions. Michelle is just about to share that link right now. <laughs> Um, tips for babies who are continuously kicking out of the wrap. Like okay, so that? that might just mean that you need to use a different style of wrapping, a different technique. If you do have a baby that is a little fidgety, um, just add another wrap over the top of that comfort wrap and make them a little bit more secure. When you secure them and you make them feel comfortable, then they can drift off into that nice deep sleep. But if they're constantly moving, then it's going to keep stirring them and then they get a little over um, tired and they can get a little sort of unsettled, which doesn't always, you know, make for a great session. <laughs> But yeah, um, like I said, those blog posts are really good in terms of information for working with babies that might have a little jaundice, might be um, a little unsettled and might be premature, things like that. So you've got a lot of information there uh, available for you. I've put it all on the blog. Okay, just having another little look here, speedy babies. I'm a bit nervous about the bare bum photos and da -da -da -da. Clean up I'm just reading some of your comments and questions yeah. as well. Just trying to keep it on on topic topic. Uh, let's see. When it comes to wrapping, um, for somebody who has uh, function loss in their hands, um, but to still be able to do newborn photography, looking for. So in terms of function loss, I'm guessing maybe like a lack of strength or the ability to, to move your hand normally. Um, you can still, when I'm wrapping, I don't know if you notice, like obviously I'm using my thumb and things like that, but you would just have to come up with a way of being able to use your hand to help secure the wrap. So I'll just bring it back to this part here. So as we're coming up over the shoulder, you know, obviously I'm using one hand, so I'm assuming, you know, if you've, you've got one hand with function loss and the other hand works um, the way that, you know, you would expect it to, then the other hand could just be rested gently on the baby to help secure the wrap. So you might, you know, you'll be able to use it in a way that if, you know, you brought the legs up, and you held them there, then that hand should just be able to rest on the legs as you bring that wrap around. And then as you do bring it around, you know, you might be able to sort of then, um, I don't know if you can then pick the wrap up with that hand in terms of the amount of function loss that you have, but even just keeping that hand there and coming around and bringing that wrap as close as you can so that then you can use that hand to help sort of lift the head and bring that wrap in underneath. But yeah, using your hand in a way that just either uses the side of the hand or the palm of the hand just to rest on the baby will also help keep that wrap in place. All right, well, we're kind of up to about 32 minutes. You're probably sick of my voice. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, just a little recap, you know, when you're working with fake babies, dolls to practice, you cannot learn how to pose with a baby. Um, you know, sure, try. It, it'll help you sort of understand how you might position a baby. I've had Crystal in the chin-up pose, I've put her in the taco pose, all of that. And, but the thing is, what's important to remember is that these babies do not have muscles, ligaments. 
they don't have a reaction, they cannot tell you if they're uncomfortable, if you've extended their neck too far and you've put pressure on their airways, they can't tell you if they're um, you know, uh, got a belly pain or anything like that and shouldn't be in that position. Everyone has a, their own session workflow, I get that. But when you work with a baby and what they're comfortable with, you will find that your sessions will move a lot smoother and that baby will be settled and calm throughout that entire experience. Because if you go into a session and you're like, I'm gonna do um, the chin on hands and then I'm gonna go into uh, you know, whatever pose next, side pose, bum up pose, all of that, a froggy pose. And then you get a baby that is really unsettled, has a belly pain or you know, doesn't like being on its tummy, then you're not gonna know what to do next. So it's being able to work with a baby, understand, that's why we've written a blog post called Understanding a Baby's Behavior, um, and even their sleep patterns as well. So when you understand them, you will be able to work a lot smoother and your productivity will be greater. You'll be able to produce a better quality of photo um, because you're very focused on them and not getting frustrated that you can't achieve what it is that you kind of went into the session wanting to achieve. The other thing is, um, you know, when you're perfecting your camera skills, when you're learning to get it right in camera, this is going to also make you so much better at your craft because your editing time will be cut down. Your photos, when you are editing them, you'll be polishing them, not fixing them. And you're just gonna be so much, you know, um, oh God, I, I've, going to repeat myself but you know yeah. so much more product productive <laughs> and you're going to allow yourself to focus on other areas of your business instead of constantly sitting in front of the computer and, and trying to fix photos that you didn't get right in camera which is why I taught um, you know getting it right in camera as a tutorial on um, on my website so many of you have probably seen that already but yeah I'm looking at all the beautiful comments thank you everyone oh well, hang on we've got Pam she's got off topic I was watching your posing bag video I got mine I'm sure I've overfilled it do you know what it does take a little while to get used to how much you do fill your posing bag so I remember for me um, you know I, I used to pose fill it quite full and it would almost be quite rounded on the top and then when I started to learn more about babies and and how to make them comfortable and feel safe and secure um, that's when I started to maybe think about how I could create that well in my posing bag. Some people at the time, many years ago, were using bowls and things like that on top of the posing bag. Other people were using supports. And I just thought, well, I wonder what will happen if I take some of the beans out so I can push it down. And it worked for me. So you've basically just got to go through the process and, you know, do the trial and error. Always remember, and, you know, this is just across the board with anything that you do in in life you know there's no shortcuts you can't buy experience and that's the thing you know I'm where I am right now because I did the work and I learned from so many mistakes over the years and you know that's why I have this ability to be able to share with you what works and what doesn't work because I've been there done that <laughs> some people call it mistakes other people call it trial and error trial and error absolutely <laughs> it's all yeah learning. well it is Thursday I will see you again next Thursday um, we haven't quite locked down our topic but we're going to keep keep workshopping that idea together as a team there's already a few suggestions coming through. fantastic so. I love it but yeah, have a great weekend this weekend. Um, take care of your yourselves and please stay safe wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to seeing more of what you're sharing every day right here in this community.